Hi, I'm Paul. Is your Obsidian Vault running slow, crashing, or just behaving unexpectedly? In today's video, I'll showcase some practical methods to fix performance issues, squash bugs, and recover a corrupted vault. Join me as we explore how to debug an Obsidian Vault. We're going to jump inside Obsidian. We're going to look at debugging problems we're currently having. So problem number one is inside our vault. We have a select vault to filter, but when we choose our YouTube vault to filter, we have a delay loading our 40 vault results. We can see the delay here is quite substantial. It's not loading straight away. And I already know there's something not quite right. So that load should be instantaneous. So this will be the first problem that we're going to debug. The second problem lies in our YouTube vault. Under our YouTube landing page, we also have delays here in loading our two data view queries. And we do have some problems displaying our cards in the display here. So we can see all these cards are squished together. So the first thing we can do is hit Control Shift I, and that's going to bring up the Obsidian Developer Console. Inside here, we can detect any issues that are currently showing in our Obsidian app. So we'll just clear by hitting the little clear here. And we're going to go back to our vault. We're going to select our YouTube video. And we just want to see what loads up in the developer console. So I can't see anything of too much concern in the console. So we'll just hit Control Shift I to hide. So the next thing we can do is we can go into our settings. We can navigate to general. Down the bottom we have notify if startup takes longer than expected. So this is toggled on. We also have a little check now. So we can hit the check now button. This is going to give us a breakdown of our startup time. We can see we're running Obsidian version 1.7.4 with installer 1.6.7. The total app startup is 10,728 milliseconds. We can see a breakdown of how long all the community plugins are taking to load. So we can see that Excaladraw is taking the longest here, followed by Metabind. So we can go down to our files and links and right down at the bottom of our files and links, we have a rebuild vault cache. So if we just hit the rebuild button, that's going to rebuild our Obsidian cache. We can see the progress up to the top right there. So we do need to wait a few seconds for the re-indexing to complete. So let's go see if that's made a difference. We can see that the data view query is still taking some time to load. So that hasn't made any difference. So let's go back into our settings. Let's have a look at appearance. We have a custom theme applied. And we also have a custom CSS snippet. So let's turn off our custom CSS snippet. We'll also change back to the default theme. Now, if we try filter our results to none and then back to YouTube again, that was slightly quicker. So that has improved our performance. Let's go back to the minimal theme. So it looks like it's something to do with the minimal theme. It doesn't appear to like a setting, but we don't want to disable our theme altogether. Let's go check to see if our theme is updated. Navigate to settings, go to appearance, where it says current community themes. Click the check for updates button. You can see up the top here, there are no theme updates found. So what else can we do? Let's turn our CSS snippet back on. So the next thing we can try is disabling some of our community plugins. You can see in this vault, I have 39 plugins installed. So I'm just going to start toggling off three at a time. So I'll turn off advanced slides. I'll also turn off advanced tables or to link title. So let's go back and have a look now. So let's change to none and let's change back to YouTube. Okay, so we can see that was an instant load. So I suspect that there is an issue with one of the plugins. So it's going to be narrowed down to one of these three that I disabled. So let's just turn back on auto link title, advanced tables, 
and we'll leave advanced slides off. Now let's see if that makes a difference. So we'll just go none and we'll go back to YouTube and that's loading instantaneously. I suspect it's the advanced slides plugin that is having a compatibility issue with my minimal theme. So let's turn on advanced slides again. Let's go test it. So there's definitely a delay here in loading the data view query. So I've identified that the advanced slides plugin is my issue. So I can either log this with the developer. If I'm not using the plugin, which at this point of time I'm not, I can disable it. You could also check the configuration to see if anything in there could be causing the issue. I'm just going to disable it because if it's slowing down my data view queries, that is going to cause a lot of problems. So by disabling it and now I have my full performance back to where it should be. I also want to check to see if there's any updates. So I've got one plugin update here. So I'll just click on that one. You can see it's not an update to advanced slides, but I do want to keep this one updated. So I'm just going to update it. So unfortunately the problem is advanced slides and I need to go let Matt know that I'm having issues with that. But for now, because I'm not using it, I'll just toggle it off because it's causing performance issues. So we'll now move on to the next issue, which was our YouTube video clips. We can see that our YouTube index page is loading a lot quicker now that we've disabled advanced slides. So in our YouTube video clips, we have a display issue here. So let's just remove our custom CSS class. That kind of fixes it, but we still can't really see what's going on. It's quite narrow here. So we can do the same as before. We can switch back to the default theme. That's going to lose the ability to use cards because cards is part of the minimal theme. It does fix the uh, display, but I lose all my minimal theme settings. So that's not really what I want. So we can come back in and re-enable the minimal theme. I could go through all my plugins again and disable all my plugins to see if any of those are causing issues. And another thing I could do is I could reinstall Obsidian. By default, Obsidian Audio updates. If I hit check for updates, it is the latest version, which at the time of filming is version 1.7.4. So I don't really need to reinstall Obsidian, but I could reinstall it to see if that makes a difference. I could check my appearance settings. Because it's a data view table, let's have a look in the data view, see if there's anything in there. There's nothing in there that would make me indicate that there's an issue. So I could disable my custom CSS again. That hasn't made a difference. So it's not that. I do have some community plugins for style settings for minimal. So if we have a look at minimal cards, I've got a few settings in here. So I've got the width set, I've changed that to 200, not going to make a difference. Oh, something's happened there. Let's try and change it from 180 to 300. Uh, somewhat fixed it, but not really. So let's change it back to 180. Uh, we have maximum width and then we have some advanced settings here. It's not really going to be anything related to the width settings here because these are all default. I haven't changed them. So the only other thing I could check is the minimal theme settings. If I come into our minimal theme settings and scroll down. For data view tables, I have table width here default width for table and data view blocks. So let's change that to wide line. Okay, that's made some changes. What about maximum line width? Okay, that's making it the maximum line width and I've got 100% pane width. Okay, so let's try wide line width and then let's go back to our properties and put in our cards oh, cold fire. It's kind of working, but I'm still not really happy with it. How about cards cold gray? Slightly better. Let's go back and try a different setting. Let's go maximum line width. Okay, so now we have maximum line width with card colors three, which is part of the minimal theme. And that's looking like I had it previously. So at some stage, there's probably been an update or I've accidentally made a change to the table width and it hasn't been set to maximum line width, which is affecting how my iframes are showing. That has solved both my problems now.
If we open up Control Panel, and then if we go into our installed program and features, we can see that Obsidian is installed as version 1.6.7, but inside here, its current version is version 1.7.4. So what we could do is we could close Obsidian, we could uninstall it, and then we're just going to go grab the latest version from the Obsidian website. And then we're just going to follow the installation procedure. And now we'll hit run Obsidian. And now we have our current version matching the installer version. So that's another workaround that you can do if you're having performance issues. Let's run through a scenario where we have made a change to our vault and we want to revert back to a previous version. How do we do this? Well, we can come down to our settings. We can go into the file recovery tab under core plugins. Inside the file recovery, we can see that a snapshot is taken at a minimal interval of five minutes. This can be changed. We can also see that the history length is seven days that the snapshots are kept for. We can wipe all our snapshots, but let's just view our vault. So we have to enter the name of our note. So in this case, I'm looking at the directory note vault. I can see that I've made some changes three days ago on Wednesday, the 23rd of October. I want to show the changes. I can toggle on here and have a look at what was changed. So I can go down and I can try find the missing file changes that I'm looking for. Then I can simply copy and it's going to copy it to my clipboard. And then I just come into the source code of the note, select everything and then paste the new source code. You could also do a side-by-side -side comparison. So just open up a new note, paste the copied clipboard into the new note, then compare them side-by-side. -side. Another option is you could restore your files from a backup. So using a PC, I use a free backup software called EasyUS to do backup. And I have this scheduled on a once per week basis, although you could do it more often like daily. And what you could do is you could recover your Obsidian folder only. So if you had a corrupted Obsidian app with plugins or settings that you thought you had changed and you can't remember which ones they were, then you can just restore either the Obsidian folder on its own or you could restore just your plugins or your theme or your JSON files, which are all your configurations for Obsidian. So that's something I have done in the past and I find it's just a nice backup to have in case something catastrophic goes wrong with your Obsidian vault. If you suspect that the, your Obsidian vault is corrupted, but you're scared of losing your folders and notes, what I'd recommend doing is clicking on the manage vaults, create a new vault, just give it a name, just call this one new vault. It's going to ask me where I want to put it. I'm just going to put it in the same location as my corrupted vault. In this case, it's debug obsidian. Now I'm going to create my new vault. So here I have a new obsidian vault with no plugins installed, no settings added. So from here, all I need to do is either copy or cut my files from my corrupted vault. Remember, I believe the obsidian folder has something corrupted in it. And I'm just going to go paste that into my new vault. Depending on how many notes you have, it may take some time to copy. I'll get rid of the welcome note. So now I have all my notes and folders in my new fresh Obsidian vault. So it's going to take me some time to reconfigure Obsidian and also reinstall all the community plugins. Alternative would be I could go into my corrupted vault inside my Obsidian dot obsidian folder and then i could either just start by copying across the obsidian configuration here only so i could copy paste this into my new vault then just test to see if you still have issues if you do 
then you know it's related to one of these JSON file settings. If you don't, then it's quite likely that a community plugin you've installed is causing the issue. So you could either just copy one by one these plugins back into the .obsidian plugins folder. Now, they're not gonna show straight away until we close and reopen. So let's close and reopen Obsidian. We can see we have our corrupted vault here. So let's switch to our new vault. Now we're inside the new vault and we're just gonna trust author and enable plugins. You can see here that our theme needs to be reinstalled. So we'd come in and we could reinstall the minimal theme or we could simply copy it from our corrupted vault under themes here and paste it back in. But we're trying to eliminate where the issue is in our corrupted vault. So you could do your plugins first, then your theme, then maybe your snippets folder uh, until you figure out what it is that's causing the issue. So that's just another way you could debug and restore a corrupted vault. I hope this video gave you some practical debugging strategies for your Obsidian Vault. If you found it helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more Obsidian tips and tricks. Don't forget to share the video with anyone who might be struggling with Obsidian debugging. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.